I've never been more concerned about the future of our great republic, as it is continuously called a constitutional democracy by our so-called president. It is an abomination to the history of this great nation to be moving so far away from it, to be lured away from the constitutional founding principles of our great republic. And the foolish sheep supporting these same oligarchical people, these same insider wealthy people to solve their problems. And of course, their problems always involve us moving away from the Constitution, giving up our sovereignty as a nation, like the Trans-Pacific Partnership, United Nations Agenda 21, and the so-called China model policies of the United Nations. Maurice Strong, David Rockefeller, the Club of Rome, all of these frauds about global warming and that we have to tax the people and slowly through these trade agreements and regionalized agreements, a world government is being put in place. It's quasi already, obviously, we take our orders from NATO and uh, the United Nations in many cases, orders Obama to shoot people down and go to war. The point is, China is our greatest threat at this point. And this truth is completely omitted from the mainstream media, completely from the consciousness of the average American. Sure, we all get take out Chinese food and go to the, go to the buffet and buy all the shit products made in China, but we have China, who not only owns our debt, but is buying up all of our corporations that are struggling through this, these hard economic times, the new economy. It's not a recession. This is the way it's going to be, ladies and gentlemen. Unfortunately, uh, this system is not going to change. They can keep pumping money into the economy. It's only going to make matters worse. The more the Fed pumps, the longer this is going to proceed. Uh, there is no bottom. This is the status quo. It's going to continue at this rate. So what we've just done is we've just lowered the standard of living of every single American. And that will continue every time they push that keystroke and create more money made out of thin air. But we have China, who are now lining up to eat America alive. In fact, we have governors, CEOs, and mayors lining up to China, looking to China as the new daddy warbucks. In February 2012, California Governor Jerry Brown announced the formation of a China-California Joint Task Force. All the while, while China is now having nuclear submarines poised to strike the west coast of the, Amer of the United States 24-7, 365. And this is in response and defense of our intimidating factors, our intimidating actions by going into the China Sea and that, and that whole area in the Pacific with our military might. And then, of course, there is the Trans-Pacific Partnership. The Trans-Pacific Partnership uh, creates a body that trumps the, the, the legal system in the United States where uh, laws, I mean this is already happening, people have to remember what happened to Gibson guitars, look how they targeted them because of making wood, making their beautiful guitars in Nashville and, and then having uh, the, the federal government come down on them because of violating Agenda 21 policy of the, the, the wood was, was from Madagascar and it had to be produced in Madagascar. It was a violation, so they took all the wood and fined them and everything else. This is not America anymore. We have to wake up, and our, our country has been taken over by these, these globalists, these internationalists that are bent on a one-world government, and slowly, they're by death of a thousand cuts, in perfect Chinese form, they are killing us. Let me go on. It's just unbelievable. AMC Theaters, second largest theater chain in the world, 
has been purchased by China. Okay? In 2012 for $2.6 billion by the Wanda Group. Okay? And they now have the world's largest theater network. So they're collectivists. Now remember, where's the money? We look at these as countries. and it's, it, it, There are no countries. There are these corporations. And these people that own these corporations, these college of corporations, and the big players, the royal families, the ruling class families, the Illuminati, quote, families, the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, the DuPonts, I can go on and on. And their interests, the Saxe Cobra Gothas, the Windsors, the, 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 the Queen Beatrice and, and, and David Rockefeller supply, own half the oil in the world. Two people. These collectivists are taking everything. You get up on your little 21 inch screen and howl about America and democracy. There is no America. There is no democracy. There is only IBM and ITT and AT&T and DuPont, Dow, Union Carbide and Exxon. Those are the nations. 1954, at the Bilderberg's first meeting, a memo was put out that came out in 1986 that was discovered on a Xerox printing machine called Silent Weapons for a Quiet War. And it describes how they are going to uh, systematically reduce the population. Club of Rome, books, limits to growth, Read Paul Ehrlich's uh, seminal work, The Population Bomb. Read uh, Ecoscience. All of the foundations of Agenda 21 and all of these Trans-Pacific Partnerships and all of these trade agreements, NAFTA and GATT, look what it all has done to America. We're all suffering here, and each generation from now on will do worse than the one previously. But they will continue the illusion of upward mobility as they strike us down. And they'll just say you have to work harder. You just have to do more. There was a time where the average worker could feed a family of four with one income. And the wife could stay home and give her children a quality, quality of life and, and, a, and a proper education and a, and, and a religious upbringing or whatever. Their, their, uh, their value systems were, were based upon a family unit. How did we move so far away from the family unit? Social welfare, social programs. And now they call it the China model one-child policies, the way that China is doing so wonderfully. Buying up the world. One little corporation, one town, one CEO, one mayor, one governor at a time. It's just unbelievable. Uh, the biggest private property company in Beijing recently put together the Illumination Towers. Now, obviously, it's actually, it's very illuminating because the name of the towers is Lumina. The Lumina Towers, or the new luxury residential development now rising in San Francisco's pricey Rincon Hill Bay, Bayfront neighborhood, 655-unit high-rise project, joint venture of New York-based Tishman Spear and China Vanka, the largest residential property developer in the People's Republic of China. And they're taking 70% stake in the $620 million project, um, its first venture into American real estate. They're dealing directly with governors and, and people are going to their, to their country. Uh, Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker and Iowa Governor Terry Branford met with Chinese President Xi Jinping uh, and Foreign Minister Wang Yi at the Great Hall of the People in Beijing on April 15th on Tax Day. So this is already in place. It's happening. Uh, they talk about, uh, of course, the CFR have uh, most Chinese investment, this is their report, most Chinese investments have not and should not raise real concerns. That is the theme echoed repeatedly by panhandling politicians, Chamber of Commerce, trade associations and investment funds, even so-called conservative think tanks such as the Heritage Foundation, belittle national security concerns when there's money to be made. Heritage writer Derek Scissors, PhD, claims in terms of national security, ownership of Chinese firms does not matter. I mean, is this guy on drugs or something? Obviously. So, so we have 
the big pushes from all these insiders, these big Bush companies, all the insider, the skull and boners, the, the CFR, the Trilateral Commission, people like uh, uh, Managing Director David M. Marchick of the Carlisle Group, who authored a 2012 policy memo for the CFR in favor of fostering greater Chinese investments in the United States. So they put it out there, they own the media, they get everyone to buy into the whole concept of it. So now Communist China is buying American food companies. Smithfield Ham in Virginia, American company, has been purchased. The largest pork producer and processor in the United States was bought for $4.72 billion by Communist China's Xinghu Group in September. I mean, this is, I mean, and not only this, when you get into food production, they're going to be producing uh, uh, ch chicken now, uh, chicken jerky dog treats, um, having been identified as being made in China, were, were imported for human consumption, will not require a country of origin label, nor will U.S. inspectors be on site on the approval processing plants in China. So they're buying American companies. They'll be processing the food, Smithfield hams uh, from China, Chinese uh, pork, and there's no regulations. In Albuquerque, New Mexico, a federal judge on Friday cleared the way for horse slaughterhouses to resume operating in the U.S. as early as next week. U.S. District Judge Christina Armijo in Albuquerque threw out a lawsuit by the Humane Society of the United States and other animal protection groups that alleged the Department of Agriculture failed to conduct proper environmental studies when it issued permits to Valley Meat Company in Roswell, New Mexico, and an Iowa company to I slaughter horses proof. for human consumption. They need proof. I've seen it. I've seen it happening. They've got to tell people. Tell them what? It's people. Soylent Green is made out of people. Hmm. No U.S. inspectors will be on site at the approved processing plant. So they approve these plants, they put them up, put them in business, and that's the end of that. Now is mystery meat. U.S. consumers should be very concerned about the possibility of tampered meat from China. Earlier in September, Chinese police in Xi'an, the capital of China's Shangni province, seized over 44,100 pounds of counterfeit beef. In reality, it turned out to be pork that was treated with chemicals such as paraffin wax and industrial salts in order to give it the appearance of beef. Now, we know they have tainted products. They've been tainting our children's toys with lead for, for years and getting caught with that. While our money is going overseas to... to to help countries that uh, harbor terrorists or are terrorists. We pay for terrorism. The CIA does black operations to create problems. They've been caught many, many times, especially this whole fraud with 9 11. The biggest fraud. The whole war. And then they keep the fighting going. They have to keep the wars going. The tensions rising. The problems. Don't you remember the British officers that were busted? Dressing up as British, they were British MI6. They were dressing up as Arabs shooting up people. 2005. To put this all into perspective, in the short time I've been speaking with you today, ladies and gentlemen, our U.S. debt has increased by over $8,224,752. Thank you for watching Truth Talk News, where news the mainstream media ignores is the top story.